Stop calling it a damn documents case for the love of God. The breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson. And we are thrilled to be back with you for part two of The Breakdown this week because it is Trump indictment week and there's lots to talk about. Um, still. Still. Like, it's not going away <laughs> anytime soon because Trump is intransigent. He is turning this into a big campaign fundraiser, rally, rah, rah. Uh, let's get behind Trump, and he's so persecuted. He's such a martyr. All of that nonsense, predictable. Wilson, here's um, my nanoscale size violin. <laughs> nice, so small, undetectable right. by the human eye. Right, right. Um, it's just been it's been a week. And for those of you who are wondering, what is Tara doing wearing a hat? She doesn't wear hats on the breakdown. Well, it was Flag Day yesterday, and I decided to wear my little bedazzled sparkly hat in honor of that because. We have been on this campaign to take back the narrative of our American flag and the symbolism right. from the MAGAs. So in solidarity with our flag season theme, I decided to wear my little sparkly hat that my mom bought for me a couple years ago. And I don't know where. So don't at me and ask me, folks, because I don't know where she got it from. Um, but anyway, so that's what that's about. And um, Rick, <laughs> before we get into last week in the Republican Party, because there's just so much, we've got the indictment fallout, we've got the We GOP. could have done like a 90 minute last week in the Republican oh, Party this week. E easily, easily. I mean, we, it was insanity at every level. As if that doesn't happen every week, but it's exponential at this point because the the wheels of justice and karma is is closing in on Trump world and they know it, so they have to be extra. Uh, we've got the GOP reaction. We also have a preview of a new Father's Day ad, which you guys should definitely stay for because it's amazing. So we will be previewing that uh, at some point during the show. And then um, <laughs> what the hell is going on? With <laughs> <laughs> don't worry don't worry we have done 90 minute uh breakdowns by the way yes okay. we have but a 90 minute last week in the republican party would be i think our editors would quit so yes don't worry we've got your back guys um <laughs> that's funny uh now i lost my train of thought oh yeah yeah yeah. what else we're talking about today right. um there's a couple new entrants into the gop freaking presidential primary which are just laughable at this point it's just it, I, exactly like who are you do we Why have the swore logo do we have that anywhere in the assets guys i think they can pull it before the before the end of the show the logo because well, we'll i want there. america to see the logo of a very very <laughs> extremely wealthy man running for president now from Florida. Three Florida men in this race now. Oh what could God. go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, when we get to the primary section, I'm sure our uh, our, our nifty producers will grab that for us by then. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we've got to do a last week in the Republican Party because there's just there's just just so much. Take so a look. Much. So much. <laughs> So I just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. If Donald Trump is convicted of a crime and you're elected president, would you pardon him? Well, I, I, I don't want to speak about hypotheticals. It's a hoax. The whole thing is a hoax. Those are pictures of newspapers and of, of personal pictures of the president. That's not classified material right there. I think it there is looks some bad. Do you, know, you have evidence that the president, uh, when he was president, now former president, actually declassified these documents before he took them? I go on the president's word and he said he did. I'm an innocent man, I'm an innocent person. This is an insurrection. If you want to get to President Trump, you're going to have to go through me and you're going to have to go through 75 million Americans just like me. He is immunized against any indictment because of the Durham report. Hillary Clinton set up an illegal private server in her basement to conduct government business and when an Senator, investigation is had about your activity no let me finish but you this didn't answer the you question was ridiculous well yeah I, i'm trying to answer the question from a republican point of view if he has to take his solemn oath in a prison cell the next thing he will do is pardon himself this will be obliteration 
perhaps obliteration of the entire world. I will prevent it. That is why I introduced the Save Our Gas Stoves Act. You're not going to take my gas stove away. I love my gas stove. <laughs> this isn't the, 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 the moment to start lecturing people uh, about, about the science of uh, climate change. Everybody's being murdered and beat up and mugged. We're not going to let it happen. Thank you very much, everybody. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Tip oh, of the damn iceberg, people. Oh, Tip oh, of the damn iceberg. Both from a jail cell. Yeah, that that's a real a real winning campaign strategy. But he could freakishly, <laughs> yeah, horrifyingly. He could. You're correct. You are correct about that. There's nothing. The founding fathers did not anticipate an espionage act traitorous bastard would get, psycho would get reelected and um oh, you know, they did not <laughs> by the American people and could take the oath of office from a jail cell. I mean. <sighs> Rick, what are we going to do here? I mean, let's remind folks that Donald Trump, after he was arrested, booked, and arraigned in federal court on Tuesday in Miami, afterward went to a little campaign rally that they claimed was a spontaneous event, which it wasn't, right. at, the, at that Miami, uh, the Cuban restaurant in Miami, right? Where I knew when he said food for everyone, I knew that was bullshit when he it said was. it. And it's in, it was reported today in the Miami Times that it was. No, he didn't pay for any food. Nobody placed an order. It was a bunch of performative BS. Then he goes to Bedminster. And he gives, of course, his his textbook stump speech of Castro Castro length stump speech. Yes, that they've now you know worked into this. Now this is we are Cuba and a communist country. How could this happen? This is a travesty. Ignoring the fact that the guy has been indicted on espionage act charges. I've said this, and I'll continue to say it. It is not a documents case. Stop it, mean, mainstream media. Stop calling it a documents case. It is so much bigger than that. It's obstruction of justice, and it is putting our national security at risk, which is why he was charged under the Espionage Act. It exists for a reason. Right. Listen to Trump in his own words describe, I don't know, what mishandling classified information is like. <laughs> the Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. An indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. This historic and important document paints a damning picture of a former president with a reckless disregard for the nation's most closely held secrets. In the conversation that Trump allegedly had about sensitive military documents, texts between his employees about the boxes of documents, and the descriptions of the documents that he allegedly hid in a shower, in his bathroom, and at a Mar-a-Lago ballroom. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical for the safety and security of the United States and they must be enforced. Now that's the truth, okay? That those are the facts, not the nonsense that Trump was right. spewing that he continues to, that his acolytes continue to, that Fox News and all the right-wing media continues to. That's a bunch of BS. And I was pleasantly surprised we talked about this briefly on our Tuesday edition that uh, Jake Tapper was like, cut the feed because they didn't want he didn't want them showing yep. his Versailles campaign uh, speech. And Nicole, uh, Nicole Wallace did that did it right after that. Which right. Which we didn't know credit for calling it audible as a host mm -hmm. on a show where they where they are taking the, 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 the reins of responsibility for for not putting out the same kind of garbage that that the networks almost reflexively did in 2016. Mm -hmm. Because I think folks have recognized that you've got a guy in Trump who will use all the tools of a free uh, constitutional republic, including you know a broad liberal, small L liberal uh, idea about who should get covered. Newsworthy right. things should get covered is the is the idea, and that's not an ideological version of liberal. That's a that's a, 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 a just a broad sense of what should get covered. Yeah. Newsworthy things should get covered. Well. 
they recognize now that Trump is hacking that system. And he is newsworthy, but it's also fundamentally corrosive to our democracy and to the constitutional republic. And so... And it's propaganda. Th- there's no, there's no right. obligation to cover propaganda. Also, let me say this. Trump went to, to Versailles, which is a, an institution in Miami, mm-hmm. a Cuban institution. It is not the best Cuban food in Miami, okay? I'm sorry, <laughs> it's true. not. I, I, I love Versailles. I like to go to Versailles. Actually, I go to La Carreta across the street. Same family, same food, no crowds, good breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, a good con leche. Here's the thing. Make a day Trump start goes well. in there and doesn't eat anything. Doesn't even get a single fucking croqueta which mm-hmm. I will eat my body weight in croquetas if I'm mm-hmm. there, okay? It, and that's a, that's a lot of croquetas. That's a, that's a stack. It's so good. I love Cuban food. Oh, I lived in, we, my parents lived in South Florida in the Keys for like 20 yep. years. And I used to visit all the time. And I lived down there for two. And the amazing Cuban food from like the little stands on the side of the road down there, the best grew ever, up in, ever, Grew ever. up in Tampa. And my Anglo mom could cook Cuban food like nobody's damn business. Grew up with it my whole her. life. Yeah. Good for her. But, but long story short, he stops at a goddamn McDonald's. He gets McDonald's for the plane ride back. Low you could have gotten a hot and pressed. You could have gotten a media noche. Right. There's any number of options, Donald. So many. Of actual food. That grown-ups eat. Not like some freaking 77-year-old man-child. Not, not, not a happy meal. Good, Good Lord. God. And well-done steak with ketchup? Blasphemous. Listen, Put on brand. Listen. I think that would be considered an aggravating circumstance in any federal charges brought against Trump. <laughs> no is well done steaks. <laughs> with, right through jail. Catch up. <laughs> right through jail. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we ran a, a, a rapid response on this for people who did not see what happened. Like, this is the way you cover Trump. This is what you do. Take yeah. a look. Trump has gone to a famous place that all Republican candidates, actually probably Democratic candidates, go as well. That's the picture over your um, brilliant words. We don't need to see that anymore. We know where he is. The folks in the control room, I don't need to see any more of that. He, this, he's trying to turn this in. He's trying to turn it into a spectacle, into a campaign ad. That's enough of that. We've seen it already. Uh, let's go over again the 37 charges that Donald Trump is facing. You deny him the oxygen. You know what, folks? And a couple of weeks ago, we were hitting CNN pretty hard because of Chris Licht and the Trump town hall. But what you saw there with Jake is an actual journalist making a positive and and correct judgment call about the newsworthiness of one more propaganda stop on the Trump circus. Exactly. And it's it's very admirable, and it's it's I think it's also a sign that with Chris Licht gone from CNN. Uh, the, the the good journalists who are there, and there are very, very, mm-hmm. very good journalists at CNN, there are many very good journalists at CNN, um, have have now feel like they don't have to, to play this fake both sides-ism yes. of pretending Trump is a normal candidate doing normal things, because he's not. I hope so for my former colleagues over there. There's a lot of them that are very frustrated and felt hamstrung by the Chris Licht edict. And now that he's gone, they have a little more free reign to be uh, to not have to 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 fulfill a certain agenda. So right. How long yeah. that lasts? I mean, this is interim. They have an interim uh, leadership team there now of, of CNN veterans that were there pre licked. But we'll see. But in the meantime, they've been doing pretty OK. So glad to glad to see that over at CNN. But speaking of on the other side uh, at Encounter Earth, they have lost their minds. Fox News lost their damn minds on Tuesday night. Oh, Worse yes. than we thought. You think they, le- they learned a lesson from Dominion? No, they haven't. Look at this Chiron. We were on our chat on Tuesday night yep. saying, like, this can't be true. This isn't real. This right. Is, I, I, thought, I, I almost didn't tweet it out because I was like, no, that's one of those Photoshopped bullshit things that float right. around sometimes. Sometimes you, in your eagerness to, to see something funny, you're like, oh, well, yes. that's, and then it's bullshit. Especially in this day of AI and all this. And, you know, people put memes up all the time, so you don't quite know. Until journalist Twitter started blowing up. And we found, and people started running the actual video. And we said, holy shit, this is real. Wannabe dictator speaks at the White House after having his political rival arrested. People, this was a real Chiron put up on Fox News during the eight, toward the end of the eight o'clock hour, Tucker's old hour. 
while Trump was speaking from Bedminster after he had just been arrested on espionage charges, okay? And the, the absolute outrage, could you imagine if CNN or MSNBC had done this, whether it was on purpose, whether some intern in the control room decided to mess around with the banners, could you imagine the outrage, the apoplectic blood coming from their eyes, gnashing of teeth from Republicans? There would be a damn House oversight hearing about it. Yes. There, they would have, they, they, it would never, there would be a billion emails sent out mm -hmm. for raising money off of it. Mm -hmm. It would never, ever, ever, ever stop. Did you oh, see liberal yes. MSNBC call Donald Trump a wannabe dictator? Da, 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 da. That'd be the first time that, that well, it's the first time if Fox had, was talking about Trump, they'd be accurate. It, they they should have turned that around. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was. By, it, by it, the way, Trump. by the way, just an exclusive for our, for our audience tonight. Keep your eyes on Fox in the next week to 10 days. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it right there. I'll tell you more about it later. I heard about this right before we went on the air, Tara. I haven't briefed anybody yet. Oh, but y'all just keep your eye on Fox for the next seven to 10 days. Any particular hours in Fox? Because I mean, no, it, no, it's actually like, you something know, much I don't broader stare at the than, the, than, than the particular hours. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Is this programming? Is it ad content? You got to give us a little hint. It's a personnel question. Ah, okay. All right. We will we'll get to we that. Will pay attention to that. Um, the 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 media types over there at Fox, they, they've really been askew. They just don't know wh what to do with themselves now. And they're, they, they, some have gone to trying to criticize Trump and be honest about the seriousness of this. And of course, there's others who are still shoveling the bullshit. And but they're kind of freaking out. They don't know what to do here. As serious as these espionage act charges are, there are. Man, I should never tease any. No. I should never tease anything while we're live. Why? Like, my phone's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That's why it's called a tease. Whoever's buzzing you's gotta wait. Um, I want to show you guys what what we put together. With some of the reaction, the the, the right wing media reaction to to Trump's indictment and, and arrest. <laughs> you have. Cross the Rubicon twice, and we will never forgive you. Exactly how many times can they frame Trump? History will record today as the day that we cease to be a democratic republic. We don't have a republic anymore. This is the banana, re banana republic. Joe Biden should be impeached. Joe Biden mishandled classified documents uh, much more severely than Donald Trump. Joe Biden is the crookedest crook that's ever been in the Oval Office. He's trying to take out his political opponents using the executive branch. This is what Putin does. This is what Xi does. This is an insurrection. Bleach bit, hammers, emails, Burisma, Hunter. What did he do with the documents? Did he sell them to the enemy? No! It's a second tier, d a double standard of justice in this country. This is about whether the Constitution is still real in this country. There's nothing in the Constitution that says he can't be president from inside prison. And then once he gets there, well, he can pardon himself. Trump could run on pardoning himself. Vote for the part. Vote for the part. Yeah, the good old pocket pardon. The hashtag, vote for the part. This is about whether any American, any American, can expect the due process of law. Think about the people whose lives have been ruined by this uh, unending pursuit yep. of Donald Trump. To punch in the face, not just us, but Washington and Adams and Jefferson and Hamilton and everyone who came after, uh, Lincoln, everyone who died on the field at Gettysburg to save this nation. That is who is being punched in the face right now. President Trump is 76 years old. If the Department of Justice gets his way, he will die in federal prison. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. <laughs> you know, I just have to I just have to bitch about one thing just for a second. Yeah, go for it. Because having a classical education for it rarely does any fucking good for anything. You I can't think it's cross the Rubicon you. twice, dipshit. Right. You can't. <laughs> right. And you're misapplying the actual phrase crossing the Rubicon. Of course you are, because mm -hmm. you're a fucking moron. <laughs> Jesus. That guy, that guy, 
if 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 his voice alone doesn't irritate you, the spurious bullshit fake intellectualism of him it makes my skin crawl. He's a local fucking talk show host. Yes, he was a lawyer at one point. Who fucking cares? He's an idiot. Yeah, I used to like Mark Levin at one point, you know? He's an animal lover. He used to be, you know, an honest broker about the Constitution. And he's another one that just like it like so many in the last eight years since the great descent from the escalator of hell. Yeah. (laughs) Can you believe it is eight years ago tomorrow? Eight years ago. Feels like a hundred years and dog years. Because my first tweets about Trump running were in May of 2015. And I decided sometime around that month, I can't fucking do this if this guy's going to do it. He'll win the nomination and I'll be fucked because I, my my party and my country will be put it with a gun to its head forever and ever. And oh my God, I was right. Yeah. My favorite, my, my, my favorite part of the fact that it's been eight years, Tara, is my favorite thing of anybody on Twitter. Like, you just do this to make money. I'm like, no, trust me, folks. The easiest thing in the world would have been to bend the knee, take the check. <laughs> No shit. Many, many zeros were offered several times. I just never could make myself do it. Just, yeah. I, I would probably have my own show on Fox News by now. Prob- if I if I, had, I would have would. been a star there. They were recruiting me before anyway. Well, and Megyn Kelly, as a matter of fact, when she went over to... When, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Megyn Kelly, in the summer of 2016, right. um, had a private lunch with me during the mm-hmm. RNC. She right. requested to have a private lunch with me during the Republican convention in Cleveland. She was following me as a fan and would right. send me on, on Twitter and would send me uh, uh, notes and like compliments and things like telling me what a great job I was doing when I was at CNN at the time sure. arguing about Trump. And uh, she spent two and a half hours with me and was trying to recruit me hard to come over to Fox. And I was like, uh, you know, I don't know about that. Now, obviously, she ended up her demise with her career over at Fox. Right. And But I, you know, she was someone who I also looked up to as a, as a woman and an anchor and being tough and what she had endured with Trump. And I thought that we had a genuine friendship. And I have to tell you, watching her demise since then and her slippery slope into this i don't know what this is called now now that's like karen from hell is another huge disappointment but i'm telling you right now i could have sold out like so many of my other friends and a lot of my black republican friends by the way Uh and i would have been a superstar over at fox news and i'm sorry but not not being honest and throwing away my principles for the money is not who i am it's not my dna not this jersey girl sorry it's not how my mom raised me and this fight is worth it to stand up to fight for our democracy, Rick, you, me, everyone that supports the Lincoln Project, I what tell, we do here, we are on the right side of history, not those traitorous bastards. I tell people this every day because they're always like, how do you deal with the death threats? How do you deal with being yeah. called a you know a grifter, a pedophile all day, every day by these idiots? I'm like, listen, I sleep great at night. Me too. I have I have a great a great circle of friends. I have a great circle of, of people that are the best of the best of the best at the Lincoln Project at what we do. Um, I, I have, I sleep great. I, I get up every day, get re- ready to get in the fight again mm-hmm. because it's the right fight. And it is, That's it's right. always the right fight That's when right. you're standing up for the country and standing against the forces that are, that, that are so destructive and so evil that in the beginning of this, you could almost like laugh it off a little bit like, oh, they'll get Trump under control. He'll never win all that stuff. Every time people are like, why are you so skeptical? Why don't you think Jack Smith will put him in jail? Because, y'all, I've seen that son of a bitch squiggle out of every goddamn crisis. Yep. He has the luck of the devil, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> and uh, and so that's why we have to always fight and not Absolutely. just hope. So anyway, absolutely. But enough of our, yes, enough of our back to the back to the past. Sex yeah, segment. I mean, but it's surreal, you know, Rick. Like it's surreal from where we were eight years ago at this moment to like, and now where we are in this moment. Like it's, it's, it's surreal. It really is. And I look at this, and I look at other people. Since we're going down the list now of people who ha- are unrecognizable in their their craven political expediency, Marco Rubio. And his defense of Trump lately has just been insane. And this is a senator who, A, knows better. B, another Florida guy. Sorry, Rick. He hates Trump. He, he hates he Trump. He fucking hates Trump. Intelligence committee. Why he, he does this better. is beyond me. He tells people how much he dislikes him. MAGA's he, never going to love you, to. little Marco. They're at never going to, to love you. Like, he needs uh, to stop. 
with this. You know, it's kind of like Chris Christie, okay? The reason they screwed over Chris Christie, the reason Christie's running today, is because Christie put Jared's dad in jail. And so they were always going to screw him over. And Marco, Marco criticized him in the distant past in 2016. And that is the reason why he will never be Secretary of State, no matter how much he wants it. Mm-hmm. Ever. 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 And you you have him. And then you have like, you have some of these others, which is interesting to Lady watch. Lady Lindsay. Yeah, Lady Lindsay. Oh my gosh. You saw him the last week in the Republican Party. I mean, he needs to lay off the sauce when he does the Sunday morning shows. It's right? uh, not a good look I mean, for like you, Enough Lindsay. mimosas going in there, pal. I think it's stronger than that. Right. <laughs> uh, I think it's stronger than that, but good grief. And again, these were all the people who were carping from the top of the, you know, the Capitol when there was any question of what Barack Obama was doing, or if Barack right. Obama saluted a Marine with a coffee cup in his hand, and oh, you know, I mean, like, and these people. The double are... standard is is <laughs> as outrageous and stupid as it is endemic. It is, and you 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 look at, you know, it's interesting though because there are those like Bill Barr who actually on the Sunday show came out and said that if half of this is true, Trump is toast. You have John Kelly, Trump's former chief of staff, who was right. like, yeah, the guy is scared shitless. Don't, don't let all this bravado fool you. He's scared shitless because he might actually be held accountable for the first time in his life. But then you have the, the Republican primary candidates. So we've been alluding to this. We have more entrants now into the race. So you've got Chris Christie in the race now. You've got the governor guy from the from uh, North Dakota who's very wealthy, who's basically buying his way into the race. I, I still can't remember his name because he's that insignificant. And then now you have this guy who is the ceremonial mayor of Miami. The, the mayor of Miami is really a non-governing role. It's, you have, a, it's, it's, a, it's a strong council. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, different form of government for that. So you got this guy. Who do we have the do we have the information the, the the logo? Oh, we don't have it. Okay, nah, damn so it. that's okay. It's all right. So because we weren't sure if it was real or not, it was that ridiculous. Way, people, the logo that was floating around could have been made in Microsoft Word using <laughs> Comic was. Sans. It probably was, and he God. was on with George Steph. There it is. <laughs> like, uh, did, a, did a fourth fuck? grader do this? I, I don't, we don't know if this is real or not. I, I not think sure. we started, I, well, we started banging on it that night. And I was just like, what the hell? I, but look, I, he's a wealthy yeah. guy. He's a wealthy guy. Um, you know, it's one more, one more cut in the, and he's well known and pretty well liked in Miami. Not, he's not like, whatever. He's, he, but he but, has no experience at all. He's never run no, anything. No, he's got no chance of winning. But here, right. here's the interesting equation. I heard this today from somebody who's who who, uh, who looked at the DeSantis people, and they were like, "We can't even afford a point or two if this idiot is running." Oh, that's interesting. Because they 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 still believe <laughs> the DeSantis team still believes, <laughs> and I'm preparing my pitch deck to sell them certain bridges in Manhattan. Mm. Um, that cross over to another borough. Yeah, um, they still believe they're going to they're going to lose the first three primaries and come to Florida and beat Donald Trump. Like because that strategy's worked so well in the past. The Navigator poll today had DeSantis at nineteen and Trump at fifty six. DeSantis's <laughs> numbers have crashed. People, it's not a horse race. Stop you, it. Yeah, and look, and you know, I get it. Every reporter in the country is like, I'm going to make this a horse race. I'm going to cover this because these people are saying and doing things that we traditionally believe will. Stop it. Mm-hmm. Stop it. This is giving Trump exactly. This is giving Trump the ability to pretend to be a normal candidate. Mm-hmm. And and it is it is absolutely gonna, gonna be the most sickening sight for every one of those candidates. You watch every one of them, no matter what they say right now, including Chris Christie, mm-hmm. Ace and anybody else who's been even mildly critical. They will flip and they will bend the knee and they will say, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to support Donald Trump because he's our president, the nominee of our party. And Don, uh, and, and Joe Biden is a communist, right. Marxist, socialist groomer, and he wants to make America our country. a socialist gay hellhole with mandatory transgender right. education. And they're going to make up all the right. bullshit. That's right. As all if there's no some kind of moral equivalence. There is including, not. Including Chris, Chris. Sorry, folks, I have a little bit of... We're having a little bit of seasonal allergies here in the great state of Florida. 
Oh, um, that, it, rather it be allergies than something else though, Rick. Oh, so God, no, yeah. no worries, no worries. Yeah. Um, so here's a little preview. If you don't believe Rick, if you don't believe me, listen out of their own mouths what these Republican primary candidates are saying in reaction to Trump's Espionage Act arrest and indictment. Look for yourselves. And now for the first time, we are learning the details of the charges that were brought against the former president, all related to his handling of classified documents after leaving office. There are actually 38 counts against the president, including the unlawful retention of defense information, which is an Espionage Act charge. There are also charges of obstruction and conspiracy. And what we've seen over the last several years is the weaponization of the Department of Justice against the former president. I would purge all of the injustices and impurities in our system. The DOJ and FBI have been weaponized. Um, I will have uh, folks that will get together and look at all these cases who people are victims of weaponization or political targeting and we will be aggressive at issuing pardons. If Donald Trump is convicted of a crime and you're elected president, would you pardon him? Well, I, I don't want to speak about hypotheticals. I will pardon not just President Trump, but every victim of a politically motivated prosecution. That was before Nikki Haley came out and also said that she would consider pardoning him too. Right. I mean, for fuck's sake, these people. These are not serious people. They're not serious Logan people. Roy voice. Right. <laughs> they're not uh, serious people. They're not serious people. I mean, they're not. But you know what? We are going to continue to hold their feet to the fire. And one of the ads, and we're so grateful to everyone who has supported us this week, this ad has gone through the roof. Um, the espionage ad, we've extended the Something run. Something like 2 million views. It's up right now on TV. Yes. Um, Where So is... that Trump can see it, by the way. Yeah, and... right, right. Right now it's up in Bedminster. It'll, it'll run like three times tonight mm -hmm. alone. And rats um, also, right? The, yeah, the rats, rat rats one that we ran on yeah. Tuesday. Espionage um, and... and rats will be running in Bedminster through Sunday. And we may extend it after that. We'll see. But... This is an ad that actually, and folks, when we talk about the Bannon line, you've heard us talk about it, of those persuadable Republican voters. Mm -hmm. Yes, the espionage ad is about Donald Trump seeing it and getting pissed off, but it is also targeting those national security driven Republican voters who have always been a little uncomfortable about things like the secret meetings with Putin in Helsinki and the kissing up to Kim Jong un and the trivial nature of his commitment to NATO. Mm -hmm. And so this- Closing up to the Saudis, letting to, journalists right. get chopped up and Jared Kushner running around doing God with knows $2 what. $2 billion dollars in his pocket all yeah, of a sudden. presidential daily briefs and everything else that goes along with that. But yeah. yes, continue. So, but but this ad has really hit hard. And I uh, the, the thing that I found the most, um, one of the things I found the most pleasing about it is I've been contacted by a lot of former intelligence officials Mm -hmm. uh, I've been contacted by a couple of current intelligence officials who who quietly and off the record thanked me for us for for us putting this ad out there um, because they're the people who understand what really is at risk. They're the yes. ones who understand that this material doesn't just appear from the magic intel fairy. That's right. It comes from people in the field mm -hmm. doing dangerous things to go and meet with foreign assets to gather this information. It comes from people who put their lives at risk. It comes from American military personnel who, in the in the event of of some of these plans that Trump has leaked out there, could have found themselves in, you know, going into the in, into the face of death because he was too loose lipped to keep mm -hmm. a secret. Mm -hmm. So, in and we've all already, these... there's a there's you mentioned this on Tuesday how we are informants and, you know, around the world, we were losing some of them yep. and some of our, our assets. And there was an, another story today. I don't know if that was recycled or not, where they were talking about some of the um, intelligence assets for Ukraine. Yep. How, you know, there's been some 
we've lost some contact with some of them too. Is this is this possibly related to God knows what the fuck Trump leaked to Putin and his and his emissaries uh, during that? So there's a lot, and you know who else knows besides those those uh, intelligence officers and those folks that that have reached out to you? The Republicans who are defending they Trump, they, they know. know it too, and yet they, they still make that decision. And you know who else knows and doesn't give a shit? Donald Trump. That information does not belong to you. This is not yours. They are, those are not your papers. Those are not your uh, personal items to keep whenever you want. They belong to the American people. They belong right. to the agencies that created them. They belong to the men and women who swore an oath and who put their lives on the line every day to protect this country and gather that intelligence to, to, to protect us and our allies around the world. So Donald Trump and the Republicans, they know better, and yet they continue to do this. That is traitorous. And they have the audacity to turn around and say that we're the ones that don't love America, that Jack Smith and the Department of Justice doing their jobs to uphold the law and hold the lawbreakers accountable like Donald Trump. They don't love America. They hate America. There's something incredibly twisted about this. And we cannot oh, yeah. let them get away with this narrative, which is why I'm so fired up about we need to stop calling not us, but them. They need to stop calling it a damn documents case. Right. Let's it's not a documents case. about what this is here. And and a lot of a lot of headlines uh, after the arraignment made that mistake. Yes, and I thought it was. A, so, I uh, sent the picture. I thought it was something that, were, that 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 deserved a little better framing from a lot of the major press. But look, I mean, and I go back to this one more time. I think about the fact that that one of the things he leaked, according to the indictment, was a war plan. Yes. Uh, for an attack that was planned against against Iran. Iran. And somebody, somebody said to me, you know, some MAGA online said to me, like, well, you know, it's not, it's, it doesn't matter. It would have been changed. You don't know that. That and, kind and of excuse. If this case existed, the Defense Department would not have known that. Oh, my God. And, and, and I mean, and if you've got a war plan that's going up against Iran, guess what? Iran and the Saudis have now made a rapprochement. And yeah. the, the, the the Risat Ikhabarat, I think it's called, the, the Saudi intelligence service, those people are leaky as shit. They always mm -hmm. have been. Mm -hmm. okay? Leaky as shit. You don't think Iran would have had a hold of that once Jared Kushner gave it to MBS? Get the fuck of out of here. Of course, of course. And and yet, it, and no one wants to talk about that. They just want to say, oh, well, well, he had every right. It's the Presidential Records Act. and blah. No, 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 and no. 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 And you no know right what else is that. a big no? Um, the idea that the Democrats are going to stay mum about this. I know you saw the reports, Rick, and, and those who are watching may have seen this too. Look, there has been a directive that has come down from the Biden White House that the Democrats are not to speak of this indictment right now because of the accusations that it's political and all this and all that. Now, I have no problem with the president not commenting on this. That's appropriate. But... The Democrats out there that have a platform, that are surrogates of this administration, that are in the House, in the Senate, the, the, the political operatives, they absolutely should be out there reminding the American people who Donald Trump is and what every he has done. Every damn day. Every interview, every hour. I don't give a fuck if the interview is about, is about school lunch programs. You bring up that Donald Trump is a traitor and has, put the, and has endangered the lives of our intelligence community and the national security of this country and has been brought up legally on espionage charges. Every and furthermore, Carthage must be destroyed. Right. Like, I okay? don't get it. Am I wrong here, Rick? Not at all. No, no. Listen, their, their idea is, oh, well, if we don't talk about it, they can't accuse us of, of persecuting Trump. They're going to accuse you of that anyway. Yes. Do the work. Yes. Do it anyway. And, and Michelle, who is one of our producers and the creative director, just reminded me. And this is a good reminder, too. And Democrats, take a freaking note. Remind the American people that the GOP nominee, before they get elected, whether they get elected or not, while day they're the, running, day, the they, day they get, get the nomination at the convention, they that's get right. They in. get intelligence briefings, okay? They get intelligence briefings so that they are up to speed if they win the election. Are we now, really you, entrusting Donald Trump with this information again? Is that what we're saying here? I that's want to get ahead of this problem a little bit. I want to make a note to our friends in the intelligence community. If Donald Trump is the nominee, he won't know if it's real or not. Yeah. <laughs> You could you could give him a, an iPad every day with 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 a coloring book app on it. It'll be real enough.
Yeah, just add a happy meal to it and he'll be right. He'll be fine. Jared anyway. Jared will want to know everything, but you know. But this is the but this is what they should be doing. I don't understand it. And uh, I know I, I mean I I've seen that Gavin Newsom has been out there. I know that some Democrats are fantasizing about him running this time around. That's not happening. No one worth their salt should be running against Joe Biden. Nope. Uh Cornell West. And Robert Kennedy Jr. and all you other and, and like, Moonbeam Marianne Williamson. Yeah. <laughs> Moon be, yeah, yeah, these cuckoos. No, okay, I'm sorry. Um, but Gavin Newsom is is doing something smart. He is using. He's a good communicator. He's good looking, and he's very good um, under pressure. And so, what I saw when he went on Hannity the other night, this is what Democrats should be doing and using their surrogates for. Exactly what Gavin Newsom does right here. Watch. Yep. I think his policies are failing. Ah, Chips Act, Science Act, you oppose that? Despite all of the rhetoric, these bipartisan bills he keeps passing on infrastructure and the CHIPS and Science Act, the bipartisan work he did on gun legislation reform and around the debt ceiling, uh, make me feel maybe he's done a little bit better job than some But that wasn't suggested. my question. Are, does your phone light up with, Gavin, you need to get in this primary, he's not able to run? I'm rooting for our president. Bipartisan results, real results, jobs programs. Your president, Donald Trump, lost 2.6 million jobs mm -hmm. during his four years. We've created 13.1 million. Biden's created more jobs, six times more jobs than the previous three Republican presidents Is your, combined. Are you going to tell me shot. that the average family, where we have two-thirds of Americans now living paycheck to paycheck... It was 70 percent under Trump. But let's talk about inflation. It's down 40 percent since last summer. Ten months in a row. 4.9 percent. I think he's third. cognitively strong enough to I, be president. I have conversations with him all the time, yes. I think he's a man of decency and character. I'm really proud of the president. I'm proud of what he's accomplished. Is he strong last enough to be president? That's what I'm, strong I'm enough. talking Look about. Look what he just did to McCarthy. Well, I know he's capable. I see results. That's you know, how you a, push a, back. a good friend, a good friend of ours, uh, former LP team member, great person, asked me the night, like, why are you promoting this? He's isn't he like the most liberal governor in America? And I said, you know, sometimes our job is to show Democrats how to fight the right way. Correct. And and, and it was a great question, and I took it to heart um, be, because Gavin Newsom is way more liberal than I am in every oh, me respect. Too. Me too. Me uh, too. He's not he's not a guy that I think you know would be. I, I actually don't think he's a great presidential candidate for more technical reasons. Correct. But you're right, Tara. He's As a great a communicator, and when people see examples of that, <laughs> where where he didn't take the bait from Hannity. <laughs> excuse mm -hmm. me. I've got the pollen. <laughs> That's up. <laughs> but. Um, where he didn't take the bait from Hannity, where he didn't he didn't fall into the stupid Fox News traps, and he was willing to go on Fox, yes, and punch Sean Hannity in the face repeatedly, saying, mm -hmm. "You're wrong, you're mm -hmm. lying, that's <laughs> foolish. I know I, I, that what you just said isn't true." That is a good example, and it's a, it's it's important, I think, for Lincoln to sometimes highlight when we see effective fighters out there, and there are some. Gretchen Whitmer's terrific. Yes. Abigail Spanberger's terrific. You know, uh, Pete Buttigieg is terrific. They're good on TV. Yes. They go and they attack and and they go directly into the face of, of where a lot of Democrats don't want to go. They want to go on MSNBC and have and everybody say, oh, we love you too. Sometimes it's valuable to punch through the cognitive bubble that the MAGAs live in yep. and tell them to go fuck themselves. 100%. In an even-handed way, fact-based and very right. matter of factly. Right? And both Pete and and Gavin do that in that yes. very sort of masterfully steady, presentational. Yep. You know, no you know Sean. No, you, Mitch yeah. Landrew. Ooh. Mitch Landrew is. I one. love Mitch Landrew. We ought to have He's Mitch back one. on the show. We talked to him what went back in twenty twenty. I think we did in twenty twenty maybe. Something, I think. Yeah, maybe yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the, the, I I really hope that they do that because otherwise Coming up it looks on the like third anniversary of the breakdown. Oh my gosh, are we really? Yo, well, that's so. in August. In August, yeah, in August, right? During like the first week, first or second week of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, three years of this already. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so yeah, speaking of that, we are talking about you know ways that Democrats can can 
fight back, punch back. You know, this is asymmetrical political warfare here, people. Yeah. Okay. There's not just one playbook. You got to play the game that you're in and have more than one attack. Always. Okay. Um, no labels. We have been on this. For quite some time. Rick, you had an epic, epic rant on Tuesday about this. And more more information has come out. More people have spoken up about what No Labels is doing. Yeah. Uh, you got you to gotta tell folks where, where we're at here with the No Labels stuff. It, so, it's just, it's just so insane. This idea that they leaked out the other day, and I touched on it. And I, I had a long Twitter thread on it this morning as well. Mm -hmm. Where they're now saying, oh, well, if the nominee is Ron DeSantis, <laughs> we'll back out of the race. I don't want to hear a goddamn word from Nancy Jacobson or Mark Penn or Ryan Clancy ever again that we're just moderate centrists trying yeah. to bring Americans together. We just want to give Americans another opportunity to have a different option to vote for because they're lying liars who lie. They are being funded, I'll say it again, folks, by the same exact billionaire Republican donors in Dallas and on Wall Street, and in Boston. And let me tell you what those donors want. The Dallas guys want to continue. They want First, they all want a tax cut, Trump-style part two. The Dallas guys want to make sure that whoever the president is continues all the oil and gas leasing subsidies and all the oil and gas exploration subsidies and the write-offs and all the tax benefits the energy industry gets. The guys on Wall Street, they want a tax cut, and they want the carried interest deduction, and they want to make sure that they are essentially less regulated than they've ever been in their lives. And they now believe they've got a two-way win. If it's Trump, they use no labels to, to draw down conservative Democrats with their candidate, Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema or whomever. Whoever. And if it's DeSantis, they think DeSantis will easily beat Biden and they won't have to spend as much money. They'll take either one. But the fact that they pretend that Joe Biden is morally unacceptable <laughs> And equivalent to Donald Trump, Insane. and is too extreme. Insane. And they're going to say they're going to back Ron DeSantis under no universe at any point does any human being with the with the cognitive ability greater than a flatworm look at Ron DeSantis and think, oh well, there's there's Mister Moderation. There's a guy who will really bring people together. Let me tell you how 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 shitty Ron DeSantis is as a human being. Okay, today he passed the state budget and vetoed. All the projects of anybody who didn't do what he wanted, and one representative, or one state senator rather, in central Florida, which is a terribly low-lying area. There's a lot of flood problems. We've got hurricanes on the way to Florida right now. Yeah, that's he, like Lake Okeechobee, Everglades right. area, right? He vetoed all this flood control stuff in their district because he's a petty little bitch. That is the guy no labels is behind. That's and the smallest thing. He's been fighting. He's the most anti-LGBT governor in the country, six-week abortion ban, fighting with Disney, all this other bullshit. Yeah, book banning, you know. Book banning. <laughs> and he's just a bad dude. And yeah. no, no labels is basically, they gave away the game. We're going to back Ron DeSantis because he's okay for our, our donors. Right. And also, didn't and, they say something about um, uh, if Joe Biden is up by a lot? Yeah, oh. then they also said if Joe Biden's up by a lot over Trump, we won't do anything. What? Here's what's happening, guys. I have to phrase this the right way. They have a lot of staff problems at No Labels, mm. both with former staff and current staff. The current staff does not, does not understand the mission any longer because a lot of them were bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young, young folks who just wanted to make America a better place. Yeah, bipartisanship more civil, sounds kinder, great. Bipartisan. Yeah. They wanted to be problem solvers. Problem solvers, They didn't yeah. sign up to be part of Nancy Jacobson's suicide bomb mission against the Democratic Party. So we well, will be continuing on the no labels yes, front. We will, we, the, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Well, justifiably, because the, yes. it, it poses a threat. What they're doing if they move forward with their plan will hand the not will hand the, the the election to Donald Trump. This is a game of small numbers, yep. people. So we cannot yep. afford to for for people who don't realize that the third party option is not viable. It's, it's not poison. viable now. It's, it's not. Poison. And by the way, Gavin Newsom and DeSantis are in a little bit of a spat on Twitter, and I'm here for it. And I think Gavin Newsom will destroy Ron DeSantis. Well, Ga Gavin Newsom was able to appear with Bob Iger of the Disney Corporation to announce an expansion of Walt Disney Land. 
Yeah, in California. in California, it's it's glorious. It's glorious, and you see, and Ron DeSantis and his, oh, oh, he wants these obsessed with Florida. I well, don't get in their race in my, if you want. Pedophiles at Disney yeah. World and don't state. pussy foot Fuck around. Off. Don't pussy foot around. Get in the race, will ya? Oh God, DeSantis, you're so bad at this. He's well, so terrible. What we're not bad at is making ads. And um, this Father's Day, as I as I said in the beginning of the show, we have this really fantastic ad that will be running uh, over the weekend. And um, it's and this it's, ad, by the way, the the, the really called the, this year, but it's the draft, a the draft version. The draft, the, the the first cut of this ad uh, came to us from a creative partner we'd worked with in the past, mm -hmm. um, and uh, in, in 2020, great folks, very talented folks, um, and then we linkified it, if yes. you will. Yes, and to make it a little bit more evergreen, we just felt that um, it, 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 the Father's Day holiday was an appropriate time to release it, but it really is evergreen. And, and to your point earlier, Rick, about the Bannon line voters, we want to target the Bannon line fathers. And because of the attacks on women's rights and women's health and just the overall ugliness of what's going on here in our country, thanks to courtesy of MAGA and the Republicans, this is, we did a get an ad called Girls in 2020, which was another outstanding ad, you guys, unbelievable. This one is almost a version of that for dads. And I think um, you guys will enjoy it. So take a, take a sneak peek at our ad this year. Hi, dad. Thank you. You've always taken on the hard jobs and never complained. You didn't sign up for half the things you did. You just did it for me. You protected me, taught me, and guided me. I haven't said this since I was little, but I'm scared, Dad. I'm scared to send the kids off to school and to go to church. Your granddaughter is scared that her teacher is going to be fired for reading her the wrong book. And I'm scared that my health is going to be decided by a room full of men that you and I have never met. You've always been there for me, Dad even when we disagree. And so I'm asking you to do the hard thing one more time. This election, will you vote to protect me? To protect my daughter? And every daughter. Man, you guys, and shout out to Michelle for the voiceover there. Uh, she's a woman of many talents. But that that's that ad is a that ad is a great way to go at the Bannon line voters of people who are Republican or conservative or independents who lean conservative mm -hmm. um, that Trump could recapture if we don't keep making sure they understand what the stakes are. That's absolutely and, right. And that ad is a it, it's it doesn't hit you over the head with a hammer. It doesn't it doesn't go you know point by point on all the all the sins of Trump and Trumpism, but it gives you the feeling that people are experiencing in this country. Mm -hmm. It gives you the emotional weight of what people are experiencing in this country. And, and, that, um, and it happens to be true. You happens know? To be and true. that uh, has the benefit of being true, as we say. How do we do an hour tonight? It's uh, there was a lot to talk about, right? Time flies a when lot, you're trying to save the republic. Lot. So um that's by the that. way, I, somebody texted me like, why were you just dancing around in your chair? I was trying to get a cat. <laughs> who was um who was and it wasn't it wasn't nameless it's it's a, it's, a, it's the new cat oh, another cat oh my goodness it's a long story you'll know more later but the, the dancing around in your chair thing is actually kind of funny where they think you yeah. got ants in your pants i mean come on what do they think was going on here <laughs> anyway it's a tradition right. though guys when the bumper music is playing i'm always like, dancing in there this is true you know you never see true. it but i but i do you just sometimes uh, you catch you sometimes. sometimes you get me like the last second yeah well we've got the cool bumper music on the way out too so Thank you guys so much for spending time with us. I hope you enjoyed all of our ads. Thank you so much for supporting what we're doing and for supporting our ads. The more you support us, the more ads we can run. And uh, keep up the, the Flag Day campaign stuff. Uh, it's going through 4th of July. Keep sending us your videos, your pictures, and all of that. And uh, we will see you guys in two weeks. Mm -hmm.